Okay. What's the total velocity at the, at the, at the end point? V tangential end. Okay. Then we're going to see that the tangential velocity at the end is the sum of the translational plus, uh, or I should put it this way, V total at the end, the total velocity at the end here, is the sum of the translational velocity plus the center of mass velocity. Okay? And then the tangential velocity is equal to r omega. Okay? So what happens here, this is a case where the object not only has a center of mass velocity, but it's got a tangential velocity at the tip, and then therefore the total velocity at the end is the sum of the two. Okay? So you can, uh, you, to find the tangential velocity, you do r omega, and then you add that to the center of mass velocity. And to find omega, you apply the kinetic energy conservation. Okay, so you'll see that problem. Anyway, coming back to this now, what kind of a motion does this object have? Is, is it translating? In this problem, I'm just holding it at any kind of axis, and I'm just letting it go. Is there translational kinetic energy? No. Each point of the rod has translational kinetic energy. That's a different thing. But does the rod have translational kinetic energy? That's the question to ask yourself. No, it doesn't. You're just holding it, pivoting it. It just has rotational kinetic energy. So it's not like this rod. This rod is, something is hitting it and it's moving and it's rotating. It has two kinds of kinetic energies. This one has only rotational kinetic energy. Therefore, the formula to use here, you shouldn't even use half mv squared. You should just use half i omega squared. And I can't tell you how many times when I've given this problem on the test, people put half mv squared for the kinetic energy. Because they're thinking to themselves, each point of the rod has translational kinetic energy. You know? But you shouldn't think that. You should think of the rod as a whole. The rod as a whole and has only rotational. So in other words, what we need to do now is we need to solve for the omega first. The omega of the rod. Then once we get the omega, then from the omega we can calculate the tangential velocity at each point of the rod by using our omega, you see? So now, uh, now we can solve it. What's the h here? Well, the height is the height that this thing falls, right? So it's actually, the height is uh, d, right? If you're pivoting it at a point, uh, at that point, it starts here and it falls. Oh, that's another mistake people made. I just remembered now. Here's another one. Here's another place where you can go wrong. People think that the distance that this fell is from the tip to the bottom. Tip to the where you're holding it. Okay? So I've seen a lot of people put like D plus L over 2 or whatever, you know? Because they're thinking the tip fell a distance from here all the way down to here. So the distance from here to here, let me, if I draw this to uh, scale, it will look like this. Let's say I was holding it like this. Right? Let me draw them one on top of the other. So they're thinking to themselves, the tip went from here to here. So this is the center of mass. So this is uh, D. So they're thinking it drew the, 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 tip, the tip fell D plus L over 2, right? But again, that's wrong. You shouldn't think that the tip fell that much. What matters is how much did the center of mass of the object fall? You see? So wherever I'm holding it, when I was holding it like this and when it went to this point, where is the center of mass? Right there. Where was the center of mass initially? Right there. The distance from there to there. That's how much the object fell. Okay? 
So this h here is equal to the d. So the, the, uh, the kinetic energy one the, is a harder question. It's a little trickier stuff going on. Half i, and then the i, you put the uh, 1 12th ml squared plus uh, md squared again. And then you get m omega squared. Then you take this to the other side. You get uh, 2 mgd. Omega squared, and then you take the square root of this. So you calculate the omega of the rod when it's horizontal. Omega, we can call this omega horizontal. Okay. Then I multiply, if I want to know the tangential velocity at each point of the rod, now I can do whatever I was suggesting you to do at this problem. If I want to know the Tangential velocity at the end, I, well, our omega, right? So then if I wanted the, the tangential velocity at each point, so V tangential of the center of mass is going to be uh, the distance D times that, right? So D times square root of 2MGD over 1 12th ML squared plus MD squared. And then the velocity tangential at the end is going to be uh, uh, what is the distance? d plus l over 2, right? d plus l over 2 times that whole thing. OK. So now you get the idea. And then I could do a similar kind of situation with the non-uniform rod. Then, I, then you can put the numbers in depending on what the problem asks you. So now, the most difficult part of that was for me to explain to you that this object doesn't have tangential velocity as a whole. Each point of it does, but not the object. Okay? So don't use half mv squared. And when you do the potential energy in these kinds of situations, you uh, don't take the potential energy of the tip. I think in one of your homework uh, questions, I think you will see something like this, if I'm not mistaken. They, instead of using a rod, they will say a sphere. I, I forgot whether it's a sphere or a disk. They say pivot, you pivot it at the end, and the disk falls. So I'll let you do that. Apply the same principle as I taught you, OK? Uh, uh, to find the velocity, you do potential energy equals kinetic energy, but don't do half mv squared, OK? And then to do the acceleration, you do torque equals I alpha. Okay, now let's start. 